Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? As Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. Hello everybody, how Hello. are you today? Hello. We thought today that we might have a quick run through um, the basics of embalming with regard to the circulatory system. So often Trace has talked to us about how she embalms mm -hmm. and different aspects of embalming, strengths of chemicals and that sort of stuff. But basically to see and get a real visual for how it works, I thought mm. it would be a really good idea if we actually just showed on this little man here yep. what you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good idea. Mm. Yeah, let's okay. do it. So yeah. what are you dealing with? Okay, so embalming, uh, embalming a body, a whole body, mm -hmm. all intact, yeah. So we've got the carotid, the big uh, artery here, that's the carotid artery. And we've got the jugular vein that sits right next to it in uh, linear to it, so that, that next to each other like this, jugular carotid. So they're the two main vessels I need to use for a basic um, embalm. So what I'll do, I will raise the arteries and I'll have put little ties around the arteries. So I've got them raised and I can bind them and I'll make little incisions in them in this little cannula here you can see which will be attached to the embalming machine will sit in the carotid artery so the chemicals flown through the uh, cannula from the embalming machine going through the carotid artery which is going through the heart which is then going through the whole so uh, circulation system. everything that's red everything that's red and blue it's gone right. through everything and we've gone through all of this and if it's an easy embalm and there's no drama, there's no blockage anywhere, it's the, the machine, which is an embalm machine, is a pump, so it's pumping that chemical through. But what we need to do when embalming is get rid of the blood, so we need the blood to come out. So what I've done is raise the jugular next to the carotid, which is sitting next to each other. And these forceps here will sit into the jugular vein uh, and open up and the blood will come out. Because the chemical is being pushed in uh, through this, the system, it's pushing all of that blood back out through there. And what we do with the whole body is got our hot soapy water. We massage all the way up to the heart because this is where it's all coming from, coming out, and push that chemical through with some help, massage and massage, and, and that brings the uh, chemical through the body and also gets the blood out of the jugular. But if it's an autopsy... Hmm, you don't have any of this. All this has been taken out. All this is gone. The pathologists have removed the visceral organs, so all these organs in here have been removed, so the embalming becomes a little bit more difficult. Because it's all cut, yeah? So yeah, this so is cut, and this yeah. is cut, and so there's a big hole in there. There's a big hole in there. And all of that's been taken out, yep. dealt with, put back in a viscera bag, yep. and put back in there. Yep. Right. So, so then what? These are redundant. Right. Don't need these, because a lot of the blood's already basically out of this area. Yeah. There will be blood sitting in the uh, extremities, so I don't need these. They can right. go away. Yep. But I still need my cannulas connected to the embalming machine. So the difference is now, when I uh, embalm an autopsy case, I'll embalm the legs first. So I go into these major arteries, the iliacs. If I can't find the iliacs, I will go down into the femoral. Okay. And again, the cannula will sit because this is all being cut away. So we'll find a way and we'll sit into this artery and that'll pump through into this leg. And what I'll do, I'll massage and the blood will come out somewhere because it's being cut. There's, you know, so there's a lot of drainage going on. So because, there's a lot of water coming down the table. Yeah. You've got the table up on an yeah. angle yeah. and the blood will come out and yeah. then flow away. And it will flow away. So I'll massage this limb while we're embalming that. And then you'll feel that it's been embalmed. You'll feel the fluids got through to the toes, to the top. And what I do is once that's finished, I'll take the cannula out and move to the other side, find the artery in here go into the artery, repeat that again, massaging, the blood will come out, whatever uh, opening's being cut. And then we go into the arms. So again, I'll usually go into the uh, subclavian here if uh, that's still attached, because the carotid and all of this usually being cut away. 
So I'll go into the subclavian. So just round your shoulder area, inject into this arm again, massaging, and all the fluid and fluid will come out that I need out. And then go into that arm and then do that. The, the head's the most difficult because we've uh, organs all been removed and they've removed, um, you know, the vessels here, the biggest your carotid arteries have been removed really, usually really high. It's really, really difficult and there's not a lot, lot there to do. So one, this is the hardest part, we always, and bombers usually leave it to the last because it's so difficult, is we have to find these tiny, tiny facial arteries, which is cannulas far too big. The one I've got is tiny, tiny little cannula and they might, they're like, so where on the body do you go looking for those up under there? Just under the chin, right. all around the chin area. So all around this area, mm -hmm. you'll find them little facial arteries and we'll inject into there. If we're lucky and um, they've left any of the uh, major big arteries here, then we'll go in and it'll embalm the head eat lovely without trying to go into the facials. But uh, okay. yeah, it can be really difficult. I do know and I have heard in America that they're really good when they do their autopsies because they actually tag the oh, arteries. Oh, wow. They put tags on the, the um, carotids and tags on the jugular and leave enough for the embalmers because they know they need them left. So, you know, it's really good that they do that. So they're tagged. But they don't do that here. No, they just, uh, they just do their normal or whatever they do when they take the organs out. So, no. So that's a, that's a basic rundown of how we embalm a body, uh, natural case or an autopsy case. And when it's an autopsy case and with a natural, we will do a lot of hypodermic work. So that's getting a hypodermic needle attached to the embalming machine and do it, especially with an autopsy case, and we'll inject, especially around the, um, the, the torso area here because you know there's a lot of vessels missing and the fluid hasn't got into these areas. So we do a lot of injecting especially on an autopsy case. So, yeah. That's really interesting. It is. It's fascinating. Yeah. Mm, thank you for that. It is. There yeah. you go. That's how it works. So, yeah, that's how it works. And you can see how, when that's removed, how difficult it would be. Yeah. It's nice when the system works for you. Yeah, yeah. But this will all get removed along with, like, up to this area here. Yeah. And, yeah. of course, if there's a head post, the brain's removed as well. So all these vessels are cut as well up the top. So, yeah. It's okay. quite difficult. Wow. And how long might that take you? Uh, a natural um, embalm without any like issues, two hours. A autopsy embalm can t sometimes take up to six, seven hours. Oh, wow. You know, because of all that hypodermic just work. Just a lot of the work. It's a lot more work, and sometimes it just takes you longer to find a vessel than to actually do the injecting because it's finding the vessels that are pretty hard. Yeah. But again, that's only done in really particular circumstances. Yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. It? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, and then, of course, another case is if um, we have a decomposed body and when we're raising, uh, when a decomposed body and we open it, or uh, uh, when that's had an autopsy, everything's the same colour. Right, so then it makes it even it's more difficult, really difficult to find those vessels. Yeah, because really. in a non-decomposed body, are they blue and red? Yeah, you can distinguish all... Old blood and new blood. You can distinguish the colours and you, right. you, you know what you're looking for. And because we've got a body, is sometimes you press... On the chest area, you will see that the jugular will lift up. Right. So you're pushing that chest area, it's basically the heart, yep. and it's pushing the blood, and you'll see it bulge. Right, so yeah. you know that's definitely the jugular, right. you know, because that doesn't happen in the uh, yeah. arteries. So, yeah. Interesting. So it's really, so a decomposed body is usually all one colour. Which is? It's really like a, um, a sandy, uh, dark brown to oh, blackish okay. colour, yeah. you know, so everything looks the same. There's no distinguishing anything. And sometimes wow. it's falling to bits, you know, and touching yeah. it. So, yeah, so it can be very difficult. So, yeah. So, there thank you, you for sharing that. Yes. Very good. Thank you, yeah. Mister, for helping us. Yes, thank you for that. Thanks yeah. for the questions, guys. Yes, Keep them coming you. in. Yes. And, um, yeah, we will see you in the next video. Yes, bye. Bye.